this has been a, a replacement from my parts and here is our original self timer or delay action they've both been worked repeatedly in the naphtha and appear to be working fine um, work the mechanism in the naphtha to loosen up and flush away any dust and dirt and dried oily deposits or anything in uh, more severe cases if there's a you can put it in an ultrasonic cleaner but generally speaking that's not required all right well, that looks good i want to lubricate these with a bit of graphite powder and then we'll put them back in the shutter okay so first i'll cock the shutter take my retard gear train Pop that into place. It's held in place with two screws. One forms a pivot at this end. The other screw runs through an oversized hole in the mechanism in the bottom of the retard gear train and that allows some adjustment so you can swing it closer to the centre of the shutter for greater engagement with the cam or closer to the outside for lesser engagement with the cam in order to regulate the speeds. Let's see what happens. That sounded possibly a little bit slow there. We'll leave it where it is for the moment and come back and adjust that. The self timer or delay action sits in the body here that's held in place with one screw get that in position check that that runs down that sounds fine I'll just give them an extra good blow out in case there's a bit of graphite powder still floating about let's try that again Cock the shutter, set the self timer, release the shutter, hold back the self timer, yes I'm happy with that action, that sounds good, so I'll continue on. A little drive pinion for the main spring I'll get that in position that drops in there just put a little wipe of molybdenum paste on there put some on my thumb too I'm getting covered in the stuff as usual yeah the internal rack I suppose you could say I'll wipe around the inside surface wipe around the outside surface with some molybdenum paste um, there's very little going on there it doesn't need much but I hook that spring over the post Swing that into position, check that the timing is correct at that point, check that the self timer lever is correctly positioned at that end. Then I've got the speed cam setting the plate that goes on the front of the shutter and sets our shutter speeds. Just made sure I've put a little bit of molybdenum paste on those surfaces I'll set this round to the eighth of a second position oh that's much too slow okay so we need to adjust the shutter speeds I'm just having a look at my retard gear train you can adjust the speeds in two ways one is to adjust the position of the retard gear train for greater or lesser engagement with the main drive cam and the other is you can make speed adjustments 
by bending this pin so that it has greater or lesser engagement with the speed setting cam here. So I'm looking at the shape, the shape of that pin to see if it's been bent and whether it's bent in a way that's useful or not. It doesn't look particularly bent, I'm going to leave it exactly as it is. I'm just going to adjust the speeds by moving the retard gear train outwards towards the outside of the case for lesser engagement with the cam. So I've loosened off that screw. Doesn't want to move, why not? That's better. Try there. That might not be enough. That's a good place to start. It's not unusual to have to do this process multiple times, backwards and forwards, until you get your speeds to your satisfaction. I usually use an eighth of a second as the target speed. When that's correct, usually everything else pretty much follows. If anything, I would say that that was slightly fast. I'll put the retaining ring on the front and go and test this on my shutter speed tester. You get an indication as to whether that's correct or not. Well, that certainly sounds fast. Yeah, it is. Uh, I can adjust that first. That's not going to be... That's too fast. So basically, I've got to bring my speed... Bring my retard gear train in closer for greater engagement with the cam. I'll slacken that screw off slightly. And here you're moving things a very, very small amount. It's difficult to tell whether you've even moved it sometimes. Oh, that's, that was quite a bit. That was probably too much. Let's find out. As I say, it's uh, common enough to have to do this multiple times until you get things exactly where you want them. I prefer to do the speed setting, the, any adjustment by moving the gear train in or out rather than bending the arm on it which is the other alternative sometimes I'm going to test that, I think that's a bit slow now it was certainly fast before And I'll come back once I've tested it. In fact, I'll come back once I've tested it, made any adjustments, and have it to my satisfaction. Otherwise, you'll be watching this all day. All right, I've got that speed right on the money now. What else has to go in here? It's this little piece. This little piece's job is to hold the stop you from being able to depress the shutter release if the shutter is not actually cocked, which can save you film. Here we go. Put the plate back in place. For good measure, I'll put the retainer ring on the front to hold it while we I put the shutter in the outer case. Normally these retainer rings go on very smoothly. For one reason or another, this one's playing hard to get. Don't want to cross thread them because then you can never get the damn thing right.
Yeah, we're away. The outer case. A curved rack. And the, the plain curved piece, which sort of is the pusher, if you like, the curved rack actually pushes that. I'll just give these a wipe with some molybdenum paste. I've got much more of it on my fingers than I've got on the parts. Get these in place. They're in position. Now I've got to get the shutter in the case. So I want to cock it. Right, that's sitting in there. Now I've got to get my flash contact correctly positioned. Sometimes it'll pop in nicely for us and other times it struggles. Yeah, that's in. And we've got three screws. Two countersunk screws, one is slightly larger diameter than the other one. The finer of the two screws goes over here. The slightly larger diameter screw goes over here. That was just me accidentally releasing the shutter with my thumb. The flash contact, there's a little screw runs in from the side here and clamps that in place. That's all done. And the control ring's on the front of the shutter, so we can remove our retaining ring. We have this chrome trim here with the speeds on it. This is an early shutter. It does not have the aperture numbers visible at the top of the shutter, only at the base of the shutter. So there is no follower mechanism in there. Put our retaining ring in place. Run that down. Check that for action. It should be click stopped, but it shouldn't be too stiff. That's probably about right there. That feels quite good. Now the tiny screw that locks this together, amazingly, hadn't been lost. It's very easily lost, and in a case like this where it was uh, bags of loose parts, it was reasonable to expect that it would have been lost, but it hadn't been. So there's the shutter complete and ready for the lenses to go back in. So I'll give that a wipe around there and wipe that outside ring. You can see that the aperture here, diaphragm setting, follows the shutter speed ring. But if you get to the end of the travel, it will click, it'll jump. So you have to watch that. Um, don't be too enthusiastic swinging the shutter speed settings backwards and forwards. You might find that you've no longer got the exposure setting that you expected to have. Right, let's have a look at these lenses. They're particularly 
scrubby looking and of course these have been rolling around loose in the bag with loose parts so which is a lot less than ideal for lenses it means that they could be scratched or chipped so I'm just using some naphtha to clean around the mount to move any grease or contaminants from there and now I will attempt to clean the glass surfaces I'll start with the front component and I usually start very lightly with a cotton bud and some glass cleaner so I want to lift off any grit I don't want to be polishing that into the glass you can brush the lenses off first with some um, with a uh, fine brush but now I've got that rubbish off I'm just going to see if I can clean this lens to remove any smears that might be on it that looks good but now I've got to do the inside surface and it's much the same deal really First, a, a light go to remove any lumps and bumps. And a repeat. And I can still see dirt coming off. And the third time, I want to clean that to remove any smears or haze that's on that surface I can polish that with the cotton bud now and I'm checking to see what I've got and the results are good that looks very good to me so we'll just clip that in place now that's a bit rattly that suggests that the spring clips on the back of that lens are perhaps a little bit bent. It may mean that someone's pulled at the lens instead of twisting it. Just looking at the state of those, there's three little tabs here and I'm checking to see whether they look out of place at all that one there potentially is not as tight as it might be I'm going to take that off there bend that tab down slightly it should have a little bit more bite on the mount than that um, it may be that someone didn't know how to get the lens off and was pulling at it that would certainly be enough to bend those tabs slightly they are after all only quite uh, thin sections of metal and they're just brass I'll just bend that tab down slightly I might be lying, these might be steel. Alright. Put the screws back in and see what we get. I 
can see there's some loose paint from around that component that's flaked off. It's probably been being bashed about in the bag with the loose parts, I'd say. Those three screws done up. All right, once around there, clean that. Blow that clean. Let's try this. Yes, that's good. That's quite positive. It's not too stiff. It's not too loose. It's just good. Right, the rear group. Yeah, that's, that's pretty dirty. If anything, this looks worse. I'll start with the outside surface. There's a little bit of dust and rubbish on there. Mostly it's just very smeary. Get all that loose rubbish off there. Yeah, that's um, pretty grimy. All right, let's see if it'll clean. Revolving the cotton bud as I go to keep presenting a fresh surface to the glass so that if you pick up some contaminant you're not grinding it into the surface. That looks good. So that's my outside surface and that's cleaned up very well. Now I've got to do the inside surface. Much the same deal. Multiple light attempts to remove any things sitting on the glass. And there's a mark on the glass there. It, I'll have to find out what that is. It may be a fleck of paint or something that's got stuck on there. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Once more around here and I'll have to let's use some acetone or something to shift that if that's what it is. Oh, it's, it's moved now. Whatever it was was stuck on the glass but it's, it's gone. A bit just there. Let's give that a poke with a toothpick, I think. Where's it gone? Don't there. That's fine. Let's screw that into place. Well the thread on that lens isn't good. That'll be from it rattling around loose in that bag. Would it have to use the... I think I had to use the, the tool to friction tool to get this thing loose. Yeah that doesn't look nice there's a little bit of rubbish in that thread. I'll just see if I can clean that. I might have to work this in another mount. 
this thread looks a little bit sort of damaged there. There's a little thread of brass there. It's like it's been hit with something. I'll work that in another mount until I've got it clean. I'll do that by putting a little bit of brasso on here, working it in the mount backwards and forwards, pulling it out, cleaning it, putting a bit more brasso there until it polishes off that rough spot on the thread. Well that went well. I was able to get that thread cleaned up so that that lens screwed back in there cleanly. The lens looks fine. Um, I'm not expecting to have any problems with that so at least I've got the shutter done and that's one part of this jigsaw puzzle complete. Tomorrow I'll get in and start reassembling the body and hopefully I don't get too many unpleasant surprises. Well it's the next morning I'm ready to continue on with this uh, jigsaw puzzle and I'm going to start here the body and the first thing I want to do is assemble the shutter release finger to the front standard. So I'm just gathering up these pieces. Now this particular camera has a thin steel shim at this point. Some of the three C's had it, some did not. So don't uh, be surprised if your camera doesn't have a piece that looks like that. There were a lot of changes in the design of these components. This is not exactly how the earliest ones looked. The earliest ones had the same size screw both top and bottom, small ones. For some reason they decided they wanted a larger size screw at the top. Um, perhaps that to better support the finger at the top there, who would know. Anyway, that moves very freely, but to make sure it moves very freely, I'm just going to put a little bit of graphite powder in there and work it in. So I'm sorry if you're not seeing anything on camera. It's It's nice and free, I'll just blow the excess powder off. Right, that's done. Now, it needs to be very free running in this particular case because on this camera there is no spring here to bring this finger back up. It's only lifted by the uh, release in the shutter itself. So far so good. Here's the shroud. Now to get these two pieces together I've got to put the buttons and their return spring in place. So I'll just wipe a bit of synthetic grease around there where the buttons run. There are the buttons. One spring, second spring. The springs go in the holes of the buttons, they do not go over the post of the buttons. And the buttons are identical top and bottom, so that makes life easy. Get one in position. Of course you have to hold the buttons in the compressed position but as you slide all these pieces together. Right, so I'm holding those buttons compressed and I'll slide the lens standard into the shroud. At least that's the idea. 
All right. All right, that's popped through and locked into position. That's just as it should be. Now I need to lubricate that somewhat. So I'm interested in lubricating those guide rails, top and bottom of the shroud. Here I'm using synthetic grease. And in the centre, particularly at the top where the uh, track for the rangefinder goes, and at the bottom here, that's where the buttons actually push against that as they're compressed. So that needs to be nice and smooth. I'm just checking the action of this. It seems a little bit stiff. I think that's okay. That's good. What's next? Well, this piece. This is the piece from the shutter release that sits in here. Now because there's no spring here, there's nothing holding this from flapping around. So in this case it's quite important that I have the front partly collapsed so this piece can't get away. Because if it gets away, it's a bugger. You're back to square one. Now I've got to put the transfer shaft in that uh, transfers the action from the cocking rack to the front of the camera. It's got a little pinion on the end of this shaft. So I'll apply some synthetic grease to that. That goes in there. That's held in place with a little bracket, a little L-shaped bracket. And the L-shaped bracket is held in place in turn with a small round-headed screw quite short and unlike anything else on the camera. I'll get that loosely in place. Here's the entertaining part. We have to get that bracket correctly positioned. 